bless you. We are so excited to have you with us this morning. And we ask God's blessing upon each and every one of you. We would uh, like to announce that on this Sunday, our service uh, is live. And we are coming from, um, we are starting our services uh, around 1030. So when you get there, um, please make sure that if you've already filled out your questionnaire, you don't have to continue to fill it out. We already have it on file. So we're trying to make things as um, easy and smooth for you coming in as possible. So we thank God for each and every one of you that have joined us, those that are visiting from other churches as well. And we ask that you continue to pray God's blessing upon all of God's people. This is Veterans Day, and we want to acknowledge all of you out there that have contributed to our country uh, in your services, whatever the service is, and those that are contributing now, uh, we want to say we love you, we appreciate you, and our country is protected because of all of you. Amen. So thank you, thank you. Uh, if we want you to enjoy this Veterans Day. Let us bow our heads in prayer as this week we are in Psalms 51 through 55. Psalms 51 through 55. Let us bow our heads in prayer at this time. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from us, Lord, where shall we go? We thank you this morning for waking us up in our right mind. We thank you, Lord, for garments to wear, for food to eat, for having a roof over our head. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for all the blessings that thou has given unto us. Lord, for this beautiful day, we thank you. We thank you that in November we have record highs of 70 degree weather. And for that, God, we say thank you again. Now as we come to your study, Lord, allow our minds to be enlightened that we might be able to not just receive your word, receive the information, but that we might be able to share it. Lord, we thank you for being our Lord our Savior, and our Comforter. It is in Jesus' name that we pray now with thanksgiving. And those who agree joined me and said, Amen. 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 I just want to say that uh, last week we finished up uh, in our Psalms, uh, we finished up to Psalm 50, and as we covered uh, the information uh, in Psalm 50, we are now covering, uh, we were from 42 to 50, and they were songs, S-O-N-G-S, to God, our King. Now we are starting the section that is from Psalms 51 through Psalms 60, and these are the songs for difficult days. Songs for difficult days. And if the truth be told today, we all have had and will have some difficult days. But the blessing behind all of this is knowing that we serve a God who will be with us during these difficult days. Let us look uh, now. I want us to be mindful, as I said before, that these next ten psalms, are songs that help us face danger, attack, failure, and loss. These next 10 psalms that we will uh, be in touch with, Psalm 51 through 60, uh, they will uh, help us to focus on the Lord during these difficult times. Many times we focus on so many things. But these psalms kind of pull us back and help us to focus on the Lord. The songwriters here give us words to express our fear and our panic 
and our faith to God. They give us words that we can use. It helps us to know where to turn when we have those troubled days. Psalms 51 becomes what we consider as a model prayer for asking God to forgive us. This was written after David had been confronted by the prophet Nathan concerning the fact that his sins of adultery and his sin of murder had been seen by God. And now David comes to the fortress and he's telling us in this 50 to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in the sight that thou mightest be justified when thy speaketh and be clear when thy judgeth. Behold, this is when David tells him, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold thy desire of truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me, David says, with hassle. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Now this is the verse that most of us have heard, that it said, and that uh, declare God's goodness by. Verse 10 says, we're in Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When we look at those verses, and it goes on to verse 19, but David is asking God, he, he knows that he has sinned. He knows that he has come short. And, and Nathan has approached him, the prophet, and has said to him, you know, you might have thought you were getting away with this sin. You might have thought that God did not see you. But I've come to let you know today, David, that we serve an all-seeing God. We sell an Elroy God, a God that sees everything. And he tells David that God sees him. But he also tells, and, and David feels bad then because he realizes that he has sinned. And the blessing now, David finally gets to come to himself because David tells the Lord that he is sorry. And, and, and he tells him by starting out with that first verse of 51, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. He's asking, he's repenting. And, and, and it, as it goes on, is he's telling him to, uh, you know, to purge him. And, uh, you know, he was shaped in iniquity and in sin did his mother conceive him. Purge him with Hassan. And we say that word so much, but we uh, should be aware that Hassan was a type of a, 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 a 
some type of a, um, let's say, a leaf that was used. It was a substance. And this hassock you could take in the fields. And they were used years ago to wrap. They would wrap that hyssop. Hyssop is the same thing that was used when uh, the angel of death came uh, during Passover. And, they, the, and the Lord told them to, to mark the door. It was hyssop that was wrapped with twigs. And they used it as a paintbrush to uh, illuminate the door so that the angel of death could pass over that door. So hyssop, it's used and it indicates purification. It indicates purification. So he's saying, purge me with hyssop. Take, take these, this substance, these twigs, these leaves, and purge me with them. Allow me to be purified again. And then he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit. Nathan tells him, Nathan tells him that God will forgive him. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we fall short of the glory of God, it is good for us to know that God will forgive us. The word of God says he will forgive us of all unrighteousness. And if he is forgiving us of all unrighteousness, then we should be grateful, amen, to God. And so as we look at this Psalm 51, three things I need you to remember. One, from verses 1 through 6, David confesses and he laments his sin. He confesses and laments his sins. Number two, I want you to jot down that he pleads for pardon. That he may promote the glory of God and the conversion of sinners. You see, through all of this, David still wanted to do right by God. He loved God and he wanted to be used by God. So he pleads for pardon, number two, that he can promote the glory of God and the conversion of sinners. Number three, from verses 16 to 19, you're going to notice that God is pleased with his contrite heart. God is pleased with his contrite heart. Amen. And this then becomes a prayer of prosperity for Zion. This becomes a prayer. And in verse 14, he says, deliver me from blood guiltness, guiltiness. He's saying, you know, if the man's blood was on my hand, forgive me of that. And he says, oh Lord, in verse 15, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. I want to praise you, Lord. And then he says in verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. Lord, forgive me. I love you. I, I want to do your will. And he says in verse 18, do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Amen. As we move now to chapter or to Psalm 52. Psalm 52, uh, as we are going through this a particular psalm, David has now come to the house of Amulek. And there are two things I want us to remember here. Here in verses 1 through 5, we're going to learn that the enemies of the truth and the church will be described. The enemies. We're not reading all of the verses. That's why we ask you to read. But we will highlight a few of them. So the enemies of the truth and the church are described. Let's look at 52. 
Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou loveth evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Think on that. Thou loveth all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Verse 5 says, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee and root thee out of the land of the living Selah. The next thing I want you to remember in verses 6 through 9, because this is a short chapter, is that the righteous rejoice. The righteous rejoice. Remember that whatever we're going through, beloveds, whatever situations or complications might be accomplished or we might come to in our lives, that God will give us a place of rejoicing. Amen? He will give us the opportunity to rejoice. We know Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. All right, so it comes down and it tells us here that... Um, in verses 6 through 9, it tells us again that the righteous rejoice. Look at verse 6. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But see, verse 8 gives a scenario that says, But well, I'm like a green olive in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Beloved, are you trusting today? Are you trusting in the God of your salvation? Or are you trusting in what you think you see or what you think you know? Our trust should always be in the Lord. Don't doubt him. Don't second guess him. But trust in the Lord. And not, verse 9 says, I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. So again, the two things I want you to get, verses 1 through 5, to, to jot down, the enemies of the truth and the church is described, verses 1 through 5, and in verses 6 through 9, the righteous rejoice. Amen. The righteous rejoice. Now we are looking at uh, Psalm 53. Psalm 53. And Psalm 53 here, uh, if you will notice, Psalm 53, and if you turn back to Psalm 14, if you look back at Psalm 14, you are going to find that there are some similarities to this psalm. Look at Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. And then look at Psalm 53. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Uh, and so uh, the words begin to change in the next few verses, but the similarities are there. And 14 has seven verses. And uh, Psalm 53 only has six. But the psalm is almost the same as Psalm 14. That's what I need you to remember in this particular one. The scope of it is to convince us of our sins. That's the entire scope 
to convince us of our sins. God, by the psalmist here, shows us how bad we really are and proves this by his own certain knowledge. He speaks terror to persecutors, the worst of sinners. He speaks encouragement to God's persecuted people. How come it is that men are so bad? Uh, because there is no fear of God in their eyes. There's no fear of God before their eyes. We look at our world today, people that are willing to just take a gun and shoot somebody, whether they know them or not. People will break into someone else's home or break into someone's property, looting or stealing, and take something that they have not worked for. People will break, uh, hurt people's feelings and lie and be deceptive. These are things that show that there is no fear of God within them. And we must fear God. Because the word of God says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. And so we must learn to fear God. And in knowing this, it says that we are to be able to see the, the fruit of sin to what it brings men when their hearts are hardened. We can see it. That's why our jails are running over today. Amen? That's why it's difficult. We must love our neighbors regardless. It becomes difficult, but we must do that because there is going to come a Savior, a great salvation, uh, uh, and a, a turning around from sin. God will save his church. We are the church, individuals, not a church building, but we are the church, those of us who believe in God, and he will save us from our enemies. So in 53, as it ends in verses 5 and 6, there were they in great fear, where no fear was, for God had scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame. Because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were gone out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be made glad. Let us go now to Psalm 54. Psalm 54. Here in Psalm 54, I need you to write for Psalm 54. Number one, day in verses one, two, three, one, two, and three, David complains of the malice of his enemies. David is going to complain of the malice of his enemies. Verses one through three. Then in verses four through seven, it's the assurance of the divine favor and protection. It's the assurance of the divine favor and protection. And that is, of course, from God. Let's look at 54. Save me, O God, by thy name and judge me by thy strength. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. And then it says, For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. He's talking about the malice of his enemies. And then verses 4 through 7, I'm going to skip. Behold, I'm just going to read a few. Behold, verse 4 says, God is mine help. He's my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Verse 5 says, He shall reward evil unto mine enemies and cut them off from the truth. Remember, he's giving us the divine, he's giving us an assurance of the divine favor and the, the protection of God. 
He says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. And then he ends, for he hath delivered me out of all trouble. And my eye hath seen his desire upon mine enemies. God is proving that he does give divine favor and that he will protect us and take us, deliver us from our trouble. And then finally we end with Psalm 55 for today. We end with Psalm 55 for today. And Psalm 55 uh, uh, starts out with, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not myself from my supplication. We're going to find these three things with this particular psalm. Number one, verses one through eight, is prayer to God to manifest his favor. It's a prayer to God to manifest his favor. A prayer to God to manifest. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Then we're going to find, in verse 7, Lo, then, would I wander far uh, off and remain in the wilderness. So he's asking God to hear his prayer, lest he would wander off into the wilderness. And beloved, it's just like today. We can all go astray and fall short of the glory of God. And Satan's job is to help us to go astray, to move away from God. That's why he's trying to keep us out of church. Amen? That's why he's uh, running rampant in the land, putting things in our minds that if we don't have God's word in our mind and, and his spirit from reading the word of God, from singing songs and, uh, songs and hymns and spiritual things, if we're not fellowshipping with other believers, the devil will come in and try to make us think thoughts that are not godly thoughts. That's why those that are able should be returning to the household of faith. Those that are able should be in their word, studying each and every day. That's why our music, we should at some point have on our gospels, our spiritual songs and hymns, so that our minds will be alert and stay on the Lord. Otherwise, it will be like verses 9 through 15. 9 to 15 talks about the great wickedness and treachery of his enemies. 9 through uh, 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 15, it talks about the, the wickedness. Destroy, verse 9 says, destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Verse 11 says wickedness is in the midst. 12 says for it was not an enemy that uh, reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it that hated me that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. It goes on and it tells us in verse 15, let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. And for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. So this great wickedness and treachery of the enemy. And verses 16 to 23, as we conclude today, he is sure that God would, in due time, appear for him. This beloved, he was sure that God would, in due time, appear for him. Regardless as to the situation, as you have read from one all the way through, when we look at verse 16, it says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. That is a highlight verse. 
That gives us a blessed assurance that whatever it is, beloved, that we are going through, whether it's the death of a loved one, whether it is financial loss, stock markets going down or up, uh, whether it is our job, our children, not responding and doing or living as we would like for them to, whether it is a situation of a demotion or a promotion on the job, whether it is people that just seem to not like you and not respect you and you haven't done anything to them. I could go on and on and on. Sickness in the body, whatever it is, we need to be as verse 16 says, because right now he is assuring that God would in due time appear to him. And verse 16 reminds us of who we are. As for me, I will call upon God. Hallelujah. And the Lord shall save me. Beloved, all day long today, I want you to repeat that verse as often as you can. Just walk through the house if something's going through, or you're in a wheelchair, roll through, or have someone to move you, or just turn from side to side if you're bedridden, and just say, as for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. You see, it says in verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. That reminds me of Thessalonians saying, pray without ceasing, just continuously. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Verse 19 says, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Selah, think on those things, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be with at peace with him. The words of my mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Amen. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And finally, verse 23, but thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I, but I, but we, but you and I, we shall trust in thee. In all that you're doing, beloved, keep trusting in the Lord. He will not fail you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He is right by your side. Last Sunday we ministered, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, just know that he is always with you. This week as you go through the word of God, as you go through, remember, always bless somebody. Don't let a day go by that you have not made a phone call or a text or gone on Facebook to bless someone. Make sure that you're sending a card or giving a smile. You don't have to know the person. You can bless them. Someone is short in the grocery line. And you know you're sitting there with something in your pocket. Bless them. You have clothes with tags on it that you're not going to wear. Bless someone. Shoes lined up in your closet that you'll never put on. There are places that will be glad and people to receive what you no longer have need for. Don't let a day go by that you don't bless someone else. Give them a word. Tell them what you have learned. Give them an encouraging scripture. That will bless them. Well, we'll see you next on Sunday.
10.30. We're beginning services at 10.30. And we would like for you next week to read uh, 56 through 60 in the book of Psalms. 56 through 60. Please read it so that we can discuss it together. Always remember, God loves you. And he is still on the throne.